What does this little guy have to do with chemistry? Well, nothing, really, except that he's a mole. And I really love a visual pun. Of course, in chemistry, when we talk about moles, we mean something else entirely. A mole is like a pair or a dozen. It's a collection of a certain number of something. Atoms are ridiculously tiny, and we can't count a dozen atoms because they're too small. But it turns out that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power is enough atoms that we can sort of count them. That number is known as Avogadro's number, even though he wasn't the guy that calculated it. I've defined a mole here as the number of things because you could theoretically have a mole of anything. Although a mole of grains of sand is more sand than exists on this planet, so you can really only practically have a mole of things that are too small to see. So Avogadro's number is huge, and it seems a little bit random. Its value was determined, though, by figuring out how many atoms of carbon-12 would weigh exactly 12 grams. Remember that carbon-12 has a mass number of 12, meaning that a single carbon-12 atom weighs 12 atomic mass units. That means, conveniently enough, that if one atom has a certain mass number, a mole of those atoms will weigh that many grams. We call the mass of a mole of something its molar mass. The definition of a mole also means that the atomic mass as given on the periodic table in units of AMUs is the same number as the molar mass of an element in units of grams per mole. Since a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things, we can convert between moles and individual items by multiplying or dividing by Avogadro's number. Here I've switched to using particles instead of things because most of our calculations are going to involve atoms, molecules, photons, or other small particles. If you're given moles and asked for a number of some type of particles, you just multiply the given number of moles by Avogadro's number. To go from particles into moles, you just divide. Converting between moles and mass is a similar idea, but now we don't use Avogadro's number. The molar mass, or mm, must be found using a periodic table. If you're given moles, you multiply by the molar mass to find grams, and if you're given grams, you divide by the molar mass to get moles. There is one thing that I should warn you about, though. Converting between mass and moles, or between particles and moles, is just a bit of multiplication or division. It's sometimes tempting to try to convert mass into particles directly. But that's a terrible idea 100% of the time. As we move through the semester, we're going to be adding layers of complexity to these basic calculations. Our mantra is going to be, get it into moles first. Nearly all of the problems you solve are going to start with converting some given quantity into moles. There will be lots of different ways and formulas in order to find the moles, but your first go-to step should be finding the moles. Moles are our friends. Don't forget about them. <laughs>